Gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me today is LFC prospect Heather Delface Tickner. Heather, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm really, really, really excited to be here, um, and I'm just excited to connect with everybody. I look at it from a stance, too, as well. First and foremost, you want to talk about connection. First and foremost, my earliest connection with you was at LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D, and it was a pleasure and a privilege to meet you live and in person, Heather. Yes, um, that was a really, really memorable night. You looked great, and um, that was just a super fun evening for me. I don't know if any of you got to watch that, but it was just an amazing time for me, and I it was kind of like my first time being there with everyone, so I was I didn't know what to expect. I look at it from a stance as well, which first and foremost, thank you. I know I pulled off the mobster slash Beetlejuice look, everybody, and I appreciate those who complimented. Like I said, it's one of those things. It's Halloween. How do you not dress up? How do you not have fun? It's 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on a Sunday night. What better way to spend it, you know? Exactly. Who doesn't want to spend it with girls in lingerie and Beetlejuice? Mob- mobster. <laughs> that was really uh, good. I guess I thought you were beetle juicy, but I can see the mobster in there definitely. Oh, well, thank you so much. I got to say, here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, right around the corner is a little spot called Imaginations. They hooked me up, so I got to give a shout out to Imaginations for doing the damn thing. It's a nice little costume store. I'm sure a lot of people have similar costume stores in their area, but yeah, that's a big one out here is Imaginations. Nice. Good for you. I wasn't so hey. fortunate. I tried to put mine actually together and just kind of like do my own thing (laughs) so um yeah that was just a really really amazing night everyone looked amazing um you did too as well i saw you and veronica valentine over there taking photos in front of the lfc logo right by where the weigh-ins were taking place you look good heather thank you yeah i wasn't exactly sure about what to wear because it was my kind of like first time even being in an event a a live event and obviously i didn't want to overshadow anybody but i also wanted to look good and it was halloween so i just kind of went for the sparkly i don't know (laughs) situation but it was really really fun and um oh my gosh veronica leprechaun was amazing and she was throwing the gold over everybody and i thought that was super fun Oh, agreed wholeheartedly. And a lot of people were talking about Miss Veronica Valentine in her bout with Bella Inc., which was stellar. But a lot of people are also saying, and Veronica has brought this up in her own right, the woman is 51 years old. She looks amazing. And she killed it in one hell of a debut. Right? I was like, what? Are you sure you don't have those, like, numbers backwards? Like, you look amazing. I don't even know. I mean, a lot of her fans, I think, were not expecting her to come on that strong. And especially because she... I mean, fighting Bella Inc. as her first fight to me is like, I don't know. That that was a really intense fight. And I think for her to come on that strong with Bella Inc., I mean, amazing. So entertaining, so fun, and definitely worth the wait. Absolutely. And I look at it from a stance as well. Bella Inc. debuted at LFC 26, the first booty camp. Now she is in the role of the veteran, Veronica Valentine being the prospect. So it comes full circle for Bella Inc. And we saw her charging at Veronica Valentine like a spider monkey. Strikes, kicks, doing the damn thing. Hell of a start for Bella in the belt. Yeah, that's amazing. I didn't know that. That's pretty amazing that it's been going on and she's just been with it every step of the way. And also, I would like to add with that, I mean, with Bella Inc. and Veronica Valentine, now Veronica has that heartstopper type little name there with the Veronica Valentine. Very, very apropos when it comes to that, because she will stop your hearts both physically and emotionally. So, hey, it kind of, it's very fitting for Veronica. Exactly. She's a, a good friend of mine, and I'm really, I was really excited to actually be there in person. I didn't know whether it was going to be, like, better for me to actually experience it in person or pay-per-view but i couldn't stay away i was like i'm gonna have to be there for sure in person and if you get a chance all you fans out there need to go to one of our events in person it's a totally different scenario and it's a lot more engaging and we actually get up close and personal so it's really really fun 
and I will say this about coming to an event, because the venue that the LFC 35 took place at was the infamous FSW Arena. We've seen people like Killer Cross and LA Knight who've gone on to several wrestling companies. So I wanted to ask you about the venue, because it is an historic venue in the city of Las Vegas. But God dang, man, what a venue to, um, you know, hold LFC. What do you think about the FSW Arena? Yeah, you know, actually, I was really impressed walking in. I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be kind of a little smaller venue. Um, But, wow, it really took my breath away as far as the space was concerned, as far as what they can do in the future. Um, It was a really great venue, and it really felt like a regular, just a normal match. And it was kind of hidden, so it kind of felt like this, like, back alley, like, you don't know what you're going to get, and then, boom, you're in a regular professional um, you know, arena. So I feel like the fun thing about Vegas is, is, is always the surprise factor. You never know what's going to be down the next corridor. And to me, I was really impressed. I mean, it's amazing to, to think how many fighters actually have been in that arena and have actually graced the present or graced that um, mat with their presence. So it's pretty cool. Also, what's very cool about it, too, is the fact that when you have a spot like the FSW Arena and then there's Sam's Town, which is also in Las Vegas, so many different hot spots really showcases why Las Vegas is the fight capital of the world, but with many different art forms encompassed with it. Yeah, you know, if you're a fighter, you want to be in Vegas and you definitely want to have a fight in Vegas that kind of makes it officially legit. And I know for myself, following fighters, I always look forward to their Vegas fights. They're always a lot more competitive, and I feel like there's a lot more coverage and definitely a lot more fans, and they're just a little bit more exciting. Agreed. And I mean, when you have, and I'll say this right now, and a little spoiler alert, but it is out there, La Scorpia, who was Jenny Bloody Valentine and Volcana, that Lucha Landre main event, wrapped around with controversy, but it was absolutely fantastic from bell to bell. Here's the thing about Jenny. She has the Session Girls, which you are a part of, which we'll get into in a second here. Ms. Heather Tickner doing an amazing job. But she also has Women on Fire. She's really branching off from the LFC auspices, doing her thing with her own sessions, and now Women on Fire. Jenny's becoming a hot commodity with that field. Yes. Um, I've been really impressed um, on all fronts. I feel like the Session Girls has run really, really well. I, I don't have – I mean – I don't even know of another platform out there that does what that one site does. And to me, even just as a fan and also as a participant, I feel like it's run really well. It's really fun. It's really effective. And it's really easy to get to know fighters and people that you like to have fun with. And also, I feel like because everything's a little bit more connected, it's fun to see your fighters here on the LFC and then maybe session with them or things like that. And now the Women on Fire, Women Athletes on Fire, is something that is definitely a lot more um they're kind of doing their own you know setup so it's kind of giving the the brand and also the lfc and the session girls a lot more room to grow exactly and i mean for everything kind of coincides with one another which is really really awesome and it brings the fan bases together and like you said with women's athletes on fire who does not want a powerful, empowering women's organization like that, including Sessions? I mean, we are in the day and age of female empowerment with a little bit of sex appeal on the side. So we can have our cake and eat it, too, so to speak. Exactly. Well, I would say a little bit more than a little bit of sex appeal. But that's just me. <laughs> Hey, a little something to variety, you know what I'm saying? But absolutely. Speaking of sexy, I'm going to say this right now because I'm looking at you, Heather. First and foremost, that green is absolutely superb, and you are rocking that right now, man. From the shopping, the style, mm, love it. Thank you. I always love a great excuse to go shopping. That's one of my favorite competitive sports besides fighting. <laughs> You legit, I'm going to say right now, even if it's not for clothes or anything, groceries, you would do very well on the old supermarket sweep, and now it's back the supermarket sweep. You're just going for the paper towels, the napkins, just rushing to all the different sections of the store, you know? That's right. I actually, which is really, really super funny, um, I just started collecting coupons because I started watching some of those couponing like competitions where they like got paid at the end of it, and I'm like, okay, this is the next level of amazingness like i really want to learn how to be a shopping ninja we'll see what happens 
you're kind of like the Wayans brothers wearing the white chicks. You know what I'm saying? They're going after Tiffany and Amber Wilson. It's the whole plot and the, it's the whole storyline of them dressing like the typical California Beverly Hills, you know, montage. And then it's just like, you know, we're going to go shopping. And then the little spirit fingers. Like, is that kind of what encompasses your being when it comes to shopping? Yes, I actually do. I mean, I really actually I feel like I grew up kind of having it as like, OK, here's the challenge. We each get five dollars like every saturday my dad was like we got to get out of the house mom my mom was working 12 hour shifts at night as an icu pediatric intensive care so we were like dad's like after we had soccer we're like getting out of the house for sure so here's your five dollars spend it wisely so like every saturday i was like okay what am i gonna do <laughs> and how am i gonna spend this five dollars so i think i just naturally i'm a competitive person and so that flows into every part of my life, which I really feel like is kind of fun. Well, I mean, I look at it from a stance, too, as well, when it comes to shopping. And I'm going to say this right now. As someone who has been there and my dad's been there, too, just going out with the family. My mom spent a lot of time at the South Shore Mall located Bay Shore, Long Island, where I grew up. So, I mean, we've held my mom's pocketbooks a bunch of times because she had to try on. Look, That was my mom for you. Love to shop, love to have a good time and just a very vibrant personality. So it's one of those things where shopping was an integral part of my life and my dad's life. Just holding my mom's uh, pocketbook or purse, if you will, just shopping. So I have vivid Im images of that as we're talking about this in the shopping concept. <laughs> You're bringing back memories. You really are just holding the pocketbook while she would go look at stuff. So, I mean, we've all been there. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be a sibling or what have you for the female, you know, so repping it. That's right. You never know. Exactly. And I also look at it from a stance with you as well. Here's a nice little mix. You're kind of like, I'm a fighter. I'm a badass. I'll hit you. I'll kick you. You know the art form. You know the discipline. But at the same time, let me go on Rodeo Drive and shop. So you got that Rodeo Drive mixed with, you know, I'm going to fight and kick your butt. That's right. And hey, if you're shopping, it helps to have a fighting background because you never know who's going to try to get that thing that you want. Just saying. Black Friday. Well, I, you, want, you want me in your corner. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to one-up you on that with Black Friday. You were like Schwarzenegger and Sinbad and Jingle All the Way. This is what it is, going for the toy. We're in the Christmas season, so this is like li li real-life Jingle All the Way. Real life. This is real yes. life. The struggle is real. You don't know. Yep. <laughs> so you were literally like one of those like memes and one of those photos where it's like the struggle is real, first, you know, first world problems, that whole type of deal. You know what I'm saying? That's totally me. How did you know? Hey, but what's cool about it, too, is and a lot of people, it has that versatility to you as well, because, again, from your image standpoint, the internal and external beauty, it does showcase here, Heather. And also what's very cool about it is, too, you have a background, and I know you've done some stuff with boxing. You've done some stuff in which incorporates it to your sessions. But God dang, woman, the discipline, like I mentioned earlier, it showcases in your session work as well. Well, thank you so much. Um yeah, I mean, growing up as I was a competitive swimmer uh, and also I started off with soccer. So I was I was training one thing or the other all the time and sometimes both. And uh, so I'm definitely somebody that really, really likes being involved and actually focusing on an event to train for. And I think that's the whole fun of the LFC is that we actually have events to train for. It's just not willy-nilly fights, you know, off on their own. It's also like events where we come together and there's teams involved and it's just a really fun arena to actually showcase, but actually train for an event. So it kind of gives you like, you know, I just, I, I love that feeling of getting ready for an event and right, you know, kind of before you just you feel like you're on point and it's just such a rush. I'm an adrenaline junkie. What, what can you say? Well, I mean, adrenaline junkie mixed with a multifaceted, you know, personality and a variety, which is cool to go on back on that point. Because it's like, okay, I'm going to swim. I'm going to play some soccer. You're expanding your horizons. And I'm like, hey, if we can have it, I'm going to date myself with the 90s. You're like a mini Summer Sanders from the Olympian side of things on the swimming. And then you could do some Mia Ham on the other side of things with the soccer. So, hey, it's a nice little balance. That's right. Literally. <laughs> Literally, yes. 
<laughs> well, what's cool again? We're talking about swimming. We're talking about soccer. We are talking about LFC. Now you are one of the prospects, LFC prospect Heather Tickner, the doll face, if you will. Which, by the way, amazing name. Everybody has to have a nickname in LFC, and doll face is very suiting and it's very fitting. And it, it's, I love the name. I think it really does fit you very well. Oh, well, thank you so much. I just got. It kind of came from when I was growing up. I would always kind of like do my head a little like a bobblehead. <laughs> and everyone's like, you look like a little bobblehead doll, like a doll. So that's kind of how it came to be my nickname sometimes. And I would just be like, eh, I can't help it. <laughs> it's stuck. I mean, who doesn't like a good doll face, though? You know what I'm saying? It could also be used in type of like a flirtation or a radio doll face kind of deal. So, I mean, it has its different implications and different interpretations. That's right. <laughs> I mean. It does work, you know what I'm saying? And I look at it from a stance, too. Like, if we could have someone like a Serena Honey Punch, Kyle, you know, she's sweet like honey, but she has a hell of a punch. So it's one of those things where Andrea the Storm Vladoy, who was an LFC judge and former LFC champion, like, it fits the storm. Each and every one has a little inkling to us that makes us unique, and it really builds up the fighters, much like the weigh-ins that we saw at LFC 35. So it has that big fight deal to it. That's right. You know, there's two sides to every coin, and you don't know which one you're going to run into, so you better be careful. <laughs> this is very true and also if you want to use it like look at tickner your last name tick tock it can mean like doomsday like you're done it can mean like tick tock time is running out so you can market that as well that's a really good one i didn't really think of that yet but i'm gonna put it in my back pocket thank you <laughs> i'm feeling well Oh, well, hey, first and foremost, you can steal that as well because it does fit. And it's all something that we've never seen, like a time doomsday kind of deal, which, I mean, Karrion Cross, who I mentioned before, FSW does that with his character as a professional wrestler. But what's also cool about that, too, is you would want that besides the fact that, I mean, the only other TikTok I know was Tickety Talk on Blue's Clues. And as much as I love Blue's Clues, that's not very menacing, you know, when it comes to LFC. It's cutesy, but it's not menacing. I love Blue's Clues. I'm going to have to watch that after this. Okay, now I'm gonna say this right now. I grew up, I grew up with Steve Burns, and I love Steve Burns. And then we had Donovan Patton as Joe. Now we got this new dude, Josh, for Blues Clues and you. I'm gonna say this right now. I will always be the OG Steve fan when it comes to Blues Clues. Aww. I just really like the nostalgia of any of that. I feel like it just gives me such a fun, happy energy, and like, I don't know. I just always look forward to anything cartoonish, and that that's just really, really something I'm interested in cosplay kind of cartoon like kind of characters and things like that not super hardcore but a lot of people definitely know way more about that than i do so i mean yeah. i mean and i mean you can't go wrong with that because you have to have that cartoon vibe. Like, I'll be honest with you. I was that kid every, you know, every day after school, Cartoon Network. You had Alvin and the Chipmunks. You had Johnny Bravo. You had the Cartoon Network on. So it's one of those things when it comes to the cartoon aspect. We have Comic-Cons. We have superheroes. It really does get the creative juices flowing on how you want to look and present yourself to be Halloween or from the cosplay side of things. That's right. And That's I feel right. Like, you know, with LFC and all of these aspects of how you're presenting your yourself and what you're going to do and what you're going to wear that's definitely always a part of it and thinking about how to express yourself at that certain moment and and things like that it just really comes into play as far as creativity and i i love that being a part of lfc now with LFC as well, I'm going to mention this because we're talking about cosplaying and a lot of great outfits that you can wear and assort with your assortments and accessories. So I got to ask you, Heather, from the lingerie side of things, when you do make that debut in LFC, whether it be in 2022 or what have you, what are we thinking lingerie wise, ma'am? Well, I am kind of a fan of dressing up in my off time. Um, so I was thinking something like Little Bo Peep lost her sheep, but she has to fight the wolves to get them. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. You'll be, su hey. you'll, you'll be surprised and delighted. You're you're taking me down a road of Mary had a little lamb with a little, I'm going to say the three little pigs with a little red Robin Hood. So, I mean, you could really go into a lot of, a lot of areas with that and explore. So, I mean, Hey, a little house on the prairie even. So, I mean, it works. All three kind of coincide. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So many options and so much fun. I mean, 
that's a first too because i mean from the costume brawl that we had back at lfc 22 like a number of years ago god dang man like we've had school teachers we've had the you know the school girl we've had so many different costumes and maids as well but i th- we've never had like you know little boat people lost his sheep like kind of like the overall like that type of character i don't think we've ever gone that far so you would be the first hey that's awesome. I mean, LSB is definitely hitting all of the numbers as far as first, and let's go for it. <laughs> well, speaking of first, you were in the first LFC Madness. Now, I'm going to ask you about this, because you did take on Angela Marie in that. You participated. It was eventually won by T. Bella Madison and Bella Rockefeller, who we saw at LFC 35, which was an amazing bout from top to bottom, told a good story. So I got to ask you about what really gravitated you towards LFC LFC Madness, how did that come into fruition? Because we got so many prospects and wrapped up in one exciting tournament, you cannot go wrong. So tell us about getting involved in LFC Madness and that experience. Sure, yeah, actually, I have a really amazing friend, uh, Liz Lightspeed Lorton, and she's been involved with the Session Girls and kind of that whole aspect for a while. And she actually kind of brought me in as far as like, you know, she's really healthy. Um, we've always kind of done events together as far as um, pole dancing and, um, you know, kind of things like that as far as um, different performance events in the Los Angeles area. And she and I have always been kind of like the Barbie twins. <laughs> and so she was doing it and she was like, you know what? I am actually going to submit myself and this is what's going on, and why don't you take a look at it? So I kind of have a background in, you know, kickboxing, and I'm definitely a fan of MMA UFC, and so I kind of jumped at the opportunity and the, you know, connection between lingerie and UFC, I mean, like, MMA, I mean, I was like, pick me, like, I'm in. (laughs) Well, I mean... Now, you're in the right place, first and foremost. Beautiful women, lingerie, kicking butt and taking names, much like we saw with the LFL back in the day with the lingerie football league. So it incorporates that sex appeal. It incorporates that fury as well. And I'm going to say right now, you're kind of like it. I'll make another pop culture reference. You're like Jonathan Turner on Boy Meets World because Jonathan Turner was that kickboxer, that type of cool guy with the earring. So, I mean, it kind of fits. You're kind of like a female Jonathan Turner with the kickboxing. All you need is the earring and the motorcycle, and you're there. Well, I do have earrings, don't have a motorcycle yet. Maybe somebody out there can help me with that part. But, uh, yeah. Well, just, well, we got Sturgis coming up. So, I mean, if you're on a Sturgis event, you can ride on that motorcycle, man. I know. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm kind of starting. I'm in a starter phase. I'm beginning phase of, like, getting used to riding and, and being comfortable and doing longer trips and different terrain. So, hopefully by then I'll be comfortable. It's kind of scary, but it's really a rush. Definitely adrenaline. Hey, as long as they're not catching you riding dirty, you're fine. You know what I'm saying? Don't be riding dirty. Trying to catch you riding dirty. So, no, you don't (laughs) want that. (laughs) You are a music buff. I, I, I was one of those kids, man. If it was not professional wrestling or sports, as my grandfather, I used to sit on his lap. I remember as a kid, that was what I used to love doing. God rest his soul. You put on the boxing. I was a music guy. I grew up around a lot of great music. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's great about combative sports. There's a lot of different genres and different types, much like you mentioned MMA and UFC. We've seen the worlds of MMA and pro wrestling coincide. One wrestler's going to try MMA. MMA is going to try wrestling. So it's a nice blend, a nice mix of camaraderie and really a united front in the overall combative nature. World. That's right. And I think a lot of people got into their own, you know, in the last couple of years because of the whole COVID lockdown and all that. Everybody's been either training more or getting into like their different hobbies that they used to have and that they rediscovered. And it's been a really interesting time. I mean, when you're in a time of COVID and quarantine and you're kind of isolating yourself, which is what you're really doing because you can't go anywhere, you have to get the creative juices flowing and really be creative with your workouts and what have you. And I'm going to say this right now. One of the key factors going into LFC is, is, you know, fitness, folks. I mean, you got to look good. You got to look the part. And the same goes with sessions. I'm going to say right now, you're, you're killing it on the front, you little beast over here with your finesse and your overall fitness standpoint. And I see you flexing. So it's one of those things where it's like, How is that for you? Because you're at home, you're doing home workouts, you're not in the gym, but at the same time, you know, you're getting the creative juices flowing and you're ready to go. Yeah, you know, um, 
actually, it really presented an opportunity. And I look at things sometimes as challenges and an opportunity to grow in different ways. And, you know, obviously, most people like being around other people, um, kind of the, you know, just to work out and be in a gym makes it a little bit more social. So I feel like, you know, doing group workouts, doing Zoom workouts, and definitely having a platform like Session Girls and things like that has really, really been nice to have that availability. And also just kind of, you know, what are what are the parts of my fighting aspect that I want to grow? What are parts of my cardio? What are different things that I can do to make myself more well-rounded as an individual, as a fighter in different, different arenas, literally. So yeah, it was, it's, it's definitely a challenge. I think a lot of times to go from something that's so normal, uh, they barely even think about to like have that change in the drop of a hat, you know? I mean, from a stance, too, as well, when it comes to that, I mean, we're all so technologically savvy now. The phones are at our fingertips. It's cell phones. It's this and that. So we're kind of like having to shut off our brains. It's like, all right, well, let's get away from the technology. Let's actually try to do something while we're home. You know what I'm saying? So it really opens up the minds. Instead of just, you know, looking at your phone, you're actually being productive. And dare I say, positively productive. That a little twist to that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, that is, is something I was watching one of your podcasts earlier about you're addressing kind of like the background of mental health and how it's now being addressed a lot more in different ways and i think the the fact that being healthy mentally physically strong and being able to use your mind for positivity in your body and in your life in general is is something that i feel like a lot of people focusing on that now is kind of like making so that it's easier to talk about things that are are not so so easy to talk about maybe before some of the struggles and then it's also a lot easier i feel like for people to actually grow in those areas because they're not so hidden so it's it's pretty amazing it's, just, it's the outlook of life, which is also very cool, because at the same time, when it comes to mental health and putting that at the forefront, I've been there. We've all been there. I mean, from the depression side of things, you, you get that negativity, you get those thoughts. But at the end of the day, once you self-reflect and you really analyze, dissect and decipher your surroundings, you really do realize like how much life is worth it and you are worth it as a person. So it really gives us the strive to really want to accomplish ourselves over those obstacles and really just kick ass and take names in life and in whatever avenue that we're going down, whether it be sessions, LFC, what have you. It really just is a very positive outlook and really a straightforward, not backward type of mentality, you know? Right. And I feel like, you know, keeping yourself motivated, keeping yourself um, stimulated in different ways as the key factor in a lot of different types of workouts and for people as far as we don't know if we're going to get into a different lockdown situation and, and definitely different countries are going through that now even and and how to challenge yourself and stay motivated and i feel like this uh having all these different avenues to connect and also challenge yourself physically and mentally and and look hot and cute and whatever makes it so that it's a lot more fun and definitely healthy. Oh, agreed. And first and foremost, when you're talking about the hotness factor, I'm going to go back to you here, Heather, because it's one of those things where not just yourself, but the LFC girls, I will say not the hotness factor, but also you got the cutie beauty style of factors. I mean, that's not really well known from a lot of people to say that, but cutie beauty is another word that describes a lot of the LFC ladies and prospects. So yeah, I'm dubbing it right here. Hashtag cutie beauty. Oh, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to use that hashtag. <laughs> See, it's the cutie too. beauty. Ah, uh, hey, it's all right. I'm, I'm just, I'm, 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 we're the assist. We're the team. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be Pippin. You're going to be Jordan. We'll do the Chicago Bulls style. Well, I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? LeBron and Shaq. I'll make as many basketball references as I can, but I'll hit you with that assist, you know? Awesome. That's but yeah, awesome. no, I mean, yes, thank you, Heather. No, it's, it's one of those things where the fun factor comes in with LFC and everything in general that we do. Now, I'm going to ask you as well with the session side of things. I mean, sessions, there's different preferences, there are different genres, there are different things that people are into, which is very cool. So from the session side of things, how did you get involved in the session world? Because we discussed the LFC world, but the session world, the clientele, the professionals and the camaraderie there, it's an amazing thing for a lot of girls like yourself to do because it's a great community really influxed. 
Well, to me, I feel like it's kind of a natural progression, and it's something that not a lot of, you know, pro or amateur sports have that option, is actually connecting with your fans on an individual level and kind of interacting with people in creative and kink or whatever way that's kind of fun, and it's also definitely healthy. And I feel like being a part of that um, kind of background was bondage ball and things like that in Los Angeles. I got to know kind of that whole avenue of just kind of exploring yourself and also the people that you're around and different ways to be creative and kind of have that outlet. And so I feel like it's kind of a natural, fun way to kind of explore things, but also keep it on the fitness and healthy level. And it's just really fun. And everybody's a little bit different and, you know, doing their own thing. When it comes to the factor with sessions and different fetishes and kinks, I mean, there's, like you mentioned, there's dominatrix, there's the bondage side of things. Hell, how about a lift and carry? How about a leg scissor? How about a body scissors? It's systematic dissection and joint manipulation. It's the work of art. It's applying the crap, but with the sex appeal kind of twist to it. So, I mean, that has that variety and really encompasses session wrestling. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, I think that's completely it. And it's just kind of looking at, things in a little bit of a different, more interesting, fun way. And plus, you're like, you're like everybody's fantasy, which is pretty cool. The quote Mariah Carey, sweet, sweet fantasy baby, and quote ODB, God rest his soul, me and Mariah go back like House of Fire. So, I mean, it does add a nice little <laughs> a nice little twist, like I mentioned there. But, I mean, hey, if you could be someone's fantasy like that, man, sometimes everybody needs to have their fantasy fulfilled, you know, with a good session. Exactly. Why not? And it's actually supporting humanity. We're we, we have to stick together in times like these and, you know, if motivating somebody in a fun sexual manner that's that's a little bit different, um, whether it be, you know, wearing something hot or, you know what, that's good energy and that's healthy energy and that's being alive. And I feel like that's really important right now. It's about to say, first and foremost, folks, get your mind out of the gutters. We're not talking about sexual like that. We're talking about from a stance of holds and physique and maneuvers. We're not talking about those kind of maneuvers, folks. But no, in all seriousness, it really does actually brighten up a lot of people's days. And I think with LFC, in a time when we're sort of getting back to normalcy, we're slowly but surely getting there in this thing we call life and in this world. We need to have some smiles on our faces. If we can put some smiles on people's faces, it's worth it at the end of the day, you know? Exactly. And I also look at the stance too as well. No, like, I mean, you hit it on all cylinders here. When it comes to LFC, I mentioned we saw Bella Angle, Veronica Valentine, and Jenny Bloody Valentine, um, you know, oh. Jennifer Thomas. But God dang, but God dang, no, and I don't mean to cut you off, but holy hell, everybody on Halloween had so many great costumes from the girls. And I got to say right now, we got to keep doing more of these. And like we were talking about with your little Bo Peep over there, Miss Heather, God dang, man, it really does really does uh, elevate LFC. And it's really going to be fun to see how the shows go into 2022. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited. And I loved being actually there for the debut of the Lucha lingerie. That was really something that I wasn't aware that was happening. I kind of knew part of the showcase that was going to, you know, who was going to be there and what was going on. But that was really exciting. And there's so much history with the Lucha, uh, you know, wrestling just the whole background of that and the whole creativity and then where it's come from. And, and that's really, really exciting to me to be part of like the LFC that's doing that as well. I mean, here's what's cool about it, and here's what how it is when it comes to, like, the venues and everything that happens. So, for those who don't know, LFC 35 was originally supposed to take place in Mexico, but due to COVID, it got moved to Las Vegas. And I got to say, on the Las Vegas front, Lucha Landre, like you mentioned, Lucha Libre, it's an art form, it's the fluidity, it's the aerial dynamics and the aerial assault that is encompassed with Lucha Libre wrestling that has been around forever, pretty much. So, I mean, it really mixed nice well with the sex appeal of the lingerie factor. So, again, if it's a main event for y'all to see if you haven't seen it. But to not give any more spoilers, it's a controversial ending. But definitely check it out on LaundryMC.com. Definitely controversial, but worth it. <laughs> exactly. Well, sometimes in a way you got to play dirty a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes there's some shenanigans and chicanery. It happens. You know, it's competitive nature. Yeah. Got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do. I feel like I'm in the Rugrats movie. A baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. I feel like Tommy Pickles up in here. But yeah, no, it's, it's sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But also at the same time, 
But also at the same time, what's really cool, what's really cool about it is, okay. I mean, we've saw. I have, I have to watch Blue's Clues. I have to watch Rugrats, and <laughs> I have to listen to Ride and Dirty. I guess. Hey, I'm just saying, I'm giving you some gems here, man. We're talking about the mid 2000s, and I mean, we grew up with a lot of one hit wonders like Fountains of Wayne and Stacy's Mom and stuff like that, and Yellow Card Ocean Avenue. So that was our time period. Yeah, that was awesome. It and was, and I fucked up. Good. Just wearing my sweater. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right too. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it works too. I mean, when we talk about Stacy's mom and yellow card ocean Avenue, that's the mid two thousands where there's the punk, you got the pop, you got every genre of music encompassed. I mean, how we had simple plan with addicted and we had newfound glory with my friends over you, the anthems. Anthems. Totally. If you don't know those songs, please go stop this video. Stop what yep. you're doing. Go do your homework. Call me in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Take these and call me in the morning. Absolutely. Add some good Charlotte to that, too. Lifestyles of the rich and the famous. They're always complaining, always complaining. So, yes, add that to the uh, music playlist. But, no, I mean, from a stance, too, as well, like we're talking about LFC, here's a nice little mix for everybody to check out with the prospects, with the veterans. It's really opening up, and it's really taking off just to see so many people like yourself get involved. And it's a healthy environment for a lot of camaraderie and a lot of people to have fun, for God's sake. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody was nervous because there was a lot of prospects coming in for their first time. And, I mean, not only did T. Bella and Bella Rockefeller kill it, how about Sheena and Shay Lynn, man? Sheena coming out with the contacts in her eyes. Girl was a beast. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't know what to think at first. I kind of like did a double take and I was like, well, what's going on? That was actually pretty scary at, for at some point she like looked up and it was, it was, it looks amazing. It was really, really good. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> After her fight, I'll say this right now. She came over by where I was sitting by the timekeeper doing my ring announcing thing thing. And here comes Sheena over here with the contacts in her eye eating an apple. And I'm like, damn, this is like kind of scary at the same time. But it's just like, oh, she's just eating an apple. But I'm like, this woman's got contacts in her eyes and she's eating an apple. I'm like, this is badass. Don't fuck with me. I got a green apple in my hand. You know what I'm saying? Healthy, but I'll kick your ass at the same time. Right? Yeah, it was oh. amazing looking. Wow. And we've never had that either for the life of me when it comes to LFC. I've never seen someone with that attire with the face painted and the uh, the contacts in the eyes. It made for a hell of a debut, and she's a specimen. That's someone you may you may have to take on in the future there, Miss Heather. Yep, I got to be prepared. Maybe I should have my own contacts. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Now, I will say this about you because that actually brings me up to the follow-up question. You saw so many girls in action at LFC 35. You've been following the product. You are a prospect in your own right. Is there anyone that you had your eye on that you want to face in the future for the LFC? Possibly. Thinking about either Liz Lightspeed or MJ. Okay. First and foremost, I like your I like your style here. Liz is an amazing talent. For those who have not seen her work with Sessions, another LFC prospect. MJ, the Dominator Domino, made her debut against Lauren the Animal Fogel. Another specimen. She's tatted. She looks good. She has that sex appeal. That's another one to be on the lookout for. Yeah, and she, yeah. Looks, she, looks, and she really trains hard. Respect that. And I love her different – she has a lot of different uh, training background. So different types of fighting styles. So it's, it would be really exciting to be able to meet her in the ring. I would say for those who are not following MJ on the social media front, I'll put her link in the description. But MJ is all about the positivity. There's a lot of good nature. There's a lot of that spiritual connection, if you will. And I'm like, this girl's got it. She's working out. She's got the right mindset. That is somewhere where she'll go in life. And she, the future is so bright for that girl. I really look forward to seeing what's next. Yeah, I agree. She's amazing to start. You know, it's amazing that she's starting off now. And, and you know, Liz, MJ, all these amazing prospects to be a part of that group. To me, it's just such an amazing, you know, opportunity, and I feel, like, so flattered, and it's just amazing to be a part of that group. Hey, I mean, when people gravitate and see yourself for you with your boxing gloves and just everything that's encompassed with you, there's the sex appeal, there's the boxing gloves. I mean, you're ready to hit, man, left-right combo. You are, you are like the female equivalent of Mike Tyson punch-out. Don't get to you in that game. That's right. You never know. Hey. I'm part Irish, so I have, like, a drinking, fighting, dancing problem. 
shopping as well. <laughs> okay, so you're drinking, you're shopping, you got the Irish in, in you, you know what I'm saying? You're ready to be a last kicker. You're like the Be Becky Lynch style, you know what I'm saying, WWE. You're ready to freaking kick some ass and kick some ass, man. I like your style. First of all, talk, we'll talk about the Irish there, man. Let me ask you something. Are you, you know, with your drinks, is it kind of like, I'm going to put it out here. I'm going to talk about tub thumping. I'm talking about Chumbawamba. Are you to that stage where you get knocked down, where you get up again on the drinking side of things, ma'am? You like the party? Um, Actually, that's funny that you say that. I'm literally a, like a lightweight when it comes to that. I am not <laughs> some handle. Like, I am like, um, I don't know if it's just my genetics, but I like... I have maybe a Red Bull and vodka, and people are like, what? What is Not really. What about coffee? <laughs> hey, uh, good coffee, a good water, a good milk, what have you, little do, hell, even a little juice. I mean, I mean, I'm okay with that because there are a lot of people that are lightweights and who can't deal with it, which is fine because if you have one drink, sometimes that's all it takes, you know? But at the same time, it's very cool because it adds another thing now. We just exposed a weakness. She's a lightweight when it, comes, when it comes to the alcohol consumption. But at the end of the day, man, hey, I mean, it's what really makes you unique, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yeah, no, and I'm going to say this right now because I have a couple final things. And before we close this out, first and foremost, Heather, it's always a blast really getting to interact with you, not just in front of the microphone but behind the microphone. It's a true honor and pleasure to have you on the show. We're definitely going to do a round two of this. Too. <laughs> yes. Sounds like a plan. Absolutely. Now, so for you, those who have not checked her out on the Session Girls, check her out on sessiongirls.com and book a session with Miss Heather Tickner because it's a fun time. It's a fun experience. If you've seen this on this podcast, man, she's a delightful human being. Go there, do it now. But also, as well, we're going to check her out on lingerie.com for the prospect. You guys can check out her profile on the Lingerie Fighting Championships website. And before we close this out, you have your social media of your own, Miss Heather Tickner. Please promote the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, where people can follow you on all forms of social media. Of course, yes. Head on over to Heather Doll on Facebook. And my social media as far as Instagram right now, I'm developing, possibly doing Twitter. We're not sure. Uh, but right now, my Instagram is doll, D-O-L-L, -L, fit. Or fit doll. Or dolphin. Oh my gosh. Dolphin. Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> so check that out on Instagram. On? Yeah, no. Just, I'm going with that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh. Just Instagram is Dolphin. You're fine. First and foremost, don't even worry about that because there's a lot of people that come on here that will forget the social media and mix it up. You're fine. It's okay. The links will be in the description so everybody can check you out. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for having me on, Michael. This has been just a pleasure and really, really fun. And I hope to see you guys all in the ring. So for Miss Heather Dollface Tickner, my name is Michael Larkin. Thank you guys, as always, for listening to another edition of the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. Check us out on all audio forums, my YouTube channel, and the LFC Network on the Roku. Download it. Check out this podcast and check out so many amazing LFC contents, including Get Wet, starring Terry Feisty Fist London and Audrey the Mongoose Monique, which will be coming very soon to the LFC Roku. And to close it out, as I always say, beauty, strength, and dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. And Heather, Dollface, Tickner, TikTok to the heart, TikTok, you don't stop. There's some color me bad. I want to sex you up for you. I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Talk to you next time. Bye, guys. We'll talk to you next episode.